This is BBC Two. Now, Newsnight and Newsnight Review with Gavin Esler and Martha Carney. 2,500 experts agree climate change could result in catastrophe. So will governments finally get the message and act? Tonight, the world's top climate scientists say that global temperatures could rise by up to four degrees by the end of the century. Humans are very likely the cause of this and this. I'll be asking Britain's Environment Secretary why more is not being done. But it's not a girl. And it's not just humans. We sent our ethical man to track down some of the more unusual suspects, and it turned him vegan. And on Newsnight Review at 11 with Charles Summary Smith, Stephanie Merritt, Michael Gove, and Safraz Mansour. Don't play the good the treachery of teachers with Judy Dench and Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Carry on jokes, Harold Pinter style. What? The nipple connector, the nipple adapter, oh. the vertical mechanical comparator. Yeah. Bill Bailey revives old sketches. The novel which made Irene Nemirovsky's name. And a complex Napoleon with other portraits from that tumultuous era. Good evening. The debate on climate change is over. Now, Bill, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, according to another UN report, it's not solely human activity that's to blame. Almost a fifth of all global greenhouse gas emissions are from a source many of us don't think about much, from livestock. That's more than comes from every single mode of transport put together. When he heard that, Newsnight's own ethical man, Justin Rowlett, decided he had to go vegan for a month, which might explain why he's lost so much weight. But has his carbon footprint shrunk along with his waistline? Here's his report. Meet Ned. He's my Christmas dinner. An ethical man should know what it takes to get his turkey to the table. Hey, look at that! He weighs a ton! I reckon if you're going to eat animals, you should be able to watch them die, however unpleasant that is. Right, Ned, you're going to meet Tony every turkey's worst nightmare. He's dead. He's gone. That's the end of him. So you're quite an experienced plucker, then? Oh, yes. You're an old plucker, is oh, that right? Yeah. And watching Ned's last moments didn't dull my appetite for him. He was as tasty as he was ethical. How's your food, Eva? Whoa, how's Ned? <laughs> Where's Ned? Ned's on your plate. How's Ned, Bea? Oh. Ned is Rich. delicious. Really? Look, Elsa's eating him too. Come on, Elsa. Hey. I've got a cake, Ned. But my producer, Sarah, has plans for me. Now Ned's dead, she wants me to explore the impact of food on the environment by going vegan. But first, I've come for a thorough checkup. It's a midstream sample. I want to know how cutting animal products out of my diet is going to affect my health. Good, well done. Okay. So, the liver functions, despite your few pints last yeah. night, is still okay? If we look at your blood fats, we'll see that your cholesterol is slightly raised at 5.5. We want that to be below 5. Now, what things would you expect to be changed on this with the new diet, with the vegan diet? Well, a vegan diet will remove animal fat or saturated fats out of your diet mostly. If you, if you make sure you, you get enough protein from soya and, and pulses and so, you'll surely be fine. So what you're saying is that I could actually end up healthier than I am now by going on a vegan diet? You will definitely end up healthier. As but will it benefit the environment? Become healthier, but... This is a report from the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. It is an uh, exceptionally thorough attempt to work out the impact of farm animals on the environment. And it comes to a surprising conclusion. It estimates that 18% of all greenhouse gases 
are from livestock. It's the same as all the transportation in the world. Planes, trains, cars, skidoos, the lot. In case you missed that, almost a fifth of all carbon dioxide emissions are from livestock. Don't believe it? Well, listen to this. 70% of all agricultural land is used to raise animals. That's a third of the land surface of the entire planet. Not only that, more than a third of all cereal production goes to feed animals. The fossil fuel used to power this vast industry produces 160 million tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. Add in the carbon released by deforestation each year and the figure is far, far higher. Most deforested land is used for grazing and the UN reckons that takes the carbon cost of livestock up to the equivalent of 2.7 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. The scale of the industry shouldn't really come as a surprise. After all, we human beings eat a lot of animals. This is where I buy my lunch. It's a snack bar in Television Centre. And look at all the choice on offer. The problem is almost everything in here contains animal products in one form or another. Even most margarines contain milk. I've searched the entire place and I've found just one sandwich a vegan can eat. This one, a hummus sandwich. Doesn't make for a very varied diet. But carbon dioxide isn't the only global warming gas produced by the meat industry. Meat, one of the single greatest sources of greenhouse gases on Earth. The cow. There are more than one and a half billion cows on Earth, and they, and other ruminant animals like sheep, burp methane almost constantly, as I am hoping to demonstrate. That is not a cow. A dairy cow can produce as much as 500 litres of methane every single day. 35 litres of methane per litre of milk. And methane is 23 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide. Indeed, the methane produced by farm animals contributes the equivalent of 2.2 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. We're going to have to try something else. Professor Jamie Newbold has made cows burps and farts his life's work. So why do cows produce so much methane? Well, the bacteria in the gut of the animal that ferment the uh, grass, as part of that fermentation, a byproduct, hydrogen, to get rid of that, the, the cattle produce methane in their rumen. He's working on food additives for cows, including one based on garlic, which he hopes will cut methane production by as much as 50%. And there's some even more radical research in the uh, pipeline. It's based on these, because kangaroos are ruminants too. In kangaroos, kangaroos also use a forage-rich diet. They have a very different microbial population. It's a population that doesn't produce methane, it produces acetate, vinegar. We, the, the scientists in Australia are trying to understand why that happens to see whether we can change the po population in the cow to also produce those products. To make cows a little bit more like kangaroos? Well, the, the guts, the rather guts than the outside. But do we really want to start changing the bacteria in cows' guts, changing what they eat? There is a very real issue there. I mean, at some level, the unit of accounting here is methane per kilogram of meat, methane per litre of milk. Intensification will reduce that burden. You get However, more meat for less methane, so you want a, a more productive cow. Yes. However, there is then a very real ethical question. Do you want highly industrialised, intensified agriculture, or do you want agriculture that utilises resources that man can't directly use? I think I'll leave that one with you as the ethical man. As the ethical man. But what you seem to be saying is that organic farming has a higher methane output per unit than more intensive methods of farming. Yes, organic extensive agriculture, by the nature of the lower yield, has higher methane per unit of output. Of course, there are very other real benefits to those extensive systems. You have to look at it in a holistic sense. And methane isn't the only global warming gas animals produce. The 